Hello everyone, welcome to the next topic on our series of mini lectures which is face sensitive detectors. Today we will be learning how to extract small signals buried in noise. In the last lecture we have uh, learned how different types of noise affects the measurements and how uh, noise gets amplified along with the signal. Also you have seen examples on how noise power can be minimized by reducing the bandwidth. Uh, You'll be learning about lock and amplifiers or face sensitive detectors, which are basically adjustable bandpass filters. So the uh, last block in the spectrophotometer diagram is the face sensitive detect. Now uh, the main points I'll be covering in this lecture are what is face sensitive detection, how does a lock in work, and what does a lock in measure. Um, what is face sensor detection? The filtering technique that the lock-in uses is known as face sensitive detection and what happens is uh, it singles out the source signal or the signal of interest at a particular reference frequency. Typically, you modulate the source signal or chop it. Um, that is, you just turn it on and off at a particular frequency in order to make it more distant over the background and away from all the noise sources. So in phase sensitive detection, the input signal um, at a frequency, let's call it omega r, as seen uh, in the figure at the bottom, um, is multiplied. Uh, with a reference sine wave which is at a frequency omega L. Now these signals can be mathematically expressed as, um, let, let me call the source signal as V signal sine omega R T plus, assuming it has some phase, internal phase, Theta sig and the reference signal, which is VL sine omega LT plus it has a phase theta less. Now, the output of the phase sensitive detector, the PSD output, will be VPSD, which is just sig times less. And what we can expand it by writing it and using a simple trigonometric identity and the result is half v sig v l cosine omega r minus omega l t plus theta sig minus theta less. Now this is one component at the uh, difference frequency. Now there is another component at the reference frequency, uh, sorry, some frequency, which is omega r plus omega l of t and the sum of the phases. Now if you pass this PSD output through a low pass filter, assuming that the two frequencies, that is uh, omega r is equal to omega l, then what you get as the low pass filter output is the sum frequency uh, component is attenuated where and the result is a DC signal, DC output at the different, um, which is expressed as half sig um, okay so that's the output at the low pass filter. Now, if the signal is signal plus noise, then the lock-in uh, lock amplifier will detect 
signals that are very close to the omega r or the reference frequency, and frequencies that are very far away from the reference frequencies are attenuated by the low-pass filter. This is dictated by the bandwidth, delta f, which is also, um, and also you can t set the time constant on the lock and amplifier and the time constant, constant and the bandwidth of the lock and amplifier are dictated by this relation, 1 over 2 pi delta f. So if you have a very narrow bandwidth or a sharp filter, um, which also means a uh, longer integration time or settling time, that means you'll have, um, you'll have less noise in that small bandwidth as seen in the previous lecture. Now, how does a uh, lock-in work? Uh, let's take a look at um, the block diagram of the lock-in um, we have in our lab. And this is a single-phase lock-in. I will be talking about what a single-phase or dual-phase lock-in is. Now, uh, an important comp um, block in this block diagram is the PLL. And this PLL, which is also, which is the phase lock loop, it just tracks the reference phase so that theta, uh, the, the phase of the signal is equal to the phase of the reference. And the phase distance can be made zero by the phase uh, shift knob we have on the front panel. Now the reference frequency may be internally generated by the lock-in or um, you can also have a external reference from the function generator and that goes here. Uh, I'm sorry, the two things are switched here. Uh, this is actually the reference and the output is here. So what we have is essentially the input, which goes here, and uh, there are line frequency filters or notch filters well, at the line frequency and twice the line frequency um, to take care of the line noise. And so the input and the reference are multiplied, as we've seen earlier, and then pass through a low pass filter. So this is basically the uh, phase, uh, PST um, mathematical thing that we have seen earlier. Now what happens in a dual phase lock-in? Uh, the part that is crossed out is for a dual phase lock-in. Now um, you can write the PST output, which we derived earlier as uh, proportional to V sig cosine theta, and that is the X channel in a dual phase lock-in. The X channel or the in phase component in a dual phase lock-in. There is also a, a Y channel in a dual phase lock-in, and you will have the output, which is proportional to V sig sine theta, and this is in quadrature or has a 90 degree phase shift from that of the X. So to summarize, the, the dual phase lock-in gives both amplitude and phase of the signal. Um, a lock-in just, so the uh, principle of a lock-in is very simple. We have the lock-in multiplying the signal and with a pure sine wave at the reference frequency. Also, the primary advantage of the lock-in is the bandwidth narrowing. Uh, the material I have covered here is taken from one of the reading assignments, that is the SRS lock-in amplifier notes. So I encourage you to read the PDF for uh, an in-depth in understanding of the lock-in amplifier. Thank you for your attention.